I like to play basketball now and then. Now let's build daily interaction number 10. Hey, what's up everyone? John with WebDev for you, and welcome to the daily interaction series, where every weekday we build a new interaction or animation in Webflow. Today, we're gonna to build a product showcase with an image reveal. So here, if I click refresh, we see we have kind of this panel revealing, and then we see the image. All right, looks good. And then we have a title, a description, and a button here. All right, so this is what we will be building today. We're first gonna build all the elements, and then we'll add the interaction at the end. Um, so to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Also be sure to subscribe below to receive a notification every time there is a new daily interaction. Okay, so here I have a blank Webflow project and we'll start with the daily interaction class naming convention. So it's D dash the daily interaction number. So today is 10 and then the element. So every element on this site will have a D dash 10 in front of it. And this is for consistency purposes and so that we know we're working with daily interaction number 10. Um, and the first thing I'll do here is I'll add an element, I'll add a section, and I'll give it the class name D-10 section. I'll give it a height of 100 VH, so it spans the full height of the viewport and it will be the full width as well. Then I'll scroll down to background and I'll select the background and for the color, I'll set it to black. I'll scroll up to display setting. I'll set it to flux, set it to horizontal, justify center and align center. So anything I place within this section will be in the center. So now I'll add another element. I'll add a column because we're going to have two columns and we're going to have the image with the uh, image re reveal on the left and we're gonna have the text and the button on the right. So I'll select columns, and here we have the columns. Um, and if we look at the structure for the columns, um, it's a row and it has column one and column two. So here I'll select row, I'll go into styles and I'll name it D-10-row. And I'm gonna give it a max width of 960 pixels. And for this, I'm also gonna set the flux item to expand. So because the row is in a in in the section and the section has a display setting of flex, this row becomes a flex item and I can set it to expand. So it tries to fill its entire parent element, um, but because I have a max width of 960, um, it doesn't fill it to the entire width. So on large screens, the the row will only be 960 pixels and on smaller screens um, we can make the row smaller. Yeah, I just don't want it to be larger than 960 pixels in width. Um, and then for the height for the row, I'll set it to a height of 400 pixels. Um, now I'll select column one and I'll give it the class name D-10 uh, column. And I'll set this to, or actually let's backtrack a bit. Let me select the row and for the row, I want to set a display setting of flex and set it to justify start and align stretch and set it to horizontal. So this way, the children elements, so the columns, will fill the entire height of the row, okay? Because it has a display setting of align stretch. Okay, so now we go back to the column. And so we have the first column here. And yeah, I'll set the sec second column to D-10. Um, let's, let's name it column two. And the first one will say D-10 column, column one. Okay, so here we have the column and we wanna add um, some absolute position divs inside of it. So if we look at the position for the column, it's set to relative, which is what we want, so that the absolute position divs inside of it will be relative to this column and not some other parent element. Um, so here I'm going to add an element, I'm going to add a div block, and I'll name it D-10 block. And for this, I'll set it to a position 
of absolute um, and set it to full. Okay, so I want to place the image inside of here. Um, so I'll go down to uh, to background and for the background, I'll choose a background image. Yeah, I'll choose an image and I have this image here of headphones. I'll set it to cover, position it in the center and I don't need it to be tiled, so I'll set it to none for tile. All right, so that's the first block. Um, now I'll add another div block, so I'll add an element. I'll add a, uh, or actually I wanna add it to the column. So let me make sure I'm, I have the column selected. So I'll add another div block, and I'll name this uh, d-10 um, blue, blue block, okay? Um, just so I know which color it is. Again, I'll set it to a position of absolute and set it to full. Then I'll give it the background color of blue. All right, and actually what I can do, or let's see, because we can add a combo class. Or yeah, let's do it this way. Let's let's do individual classes so we can see the, the color. Um, so yeah, I'll go back into the column. I'll add another div block. And I'll name this one D-10 pink or magenta block. And again, I'll set it to a position of absolute and full. And I'll give it the background color of magenta. And then we have one more block. So I'll add an element. I'll add a div block. And I'll give it the class name D-10 uh, pink block. And I'll scroll down and I'll select this light pink here, or plum. And yeah, I'll set it to a position of absolute and full. Okay, so there I have the three different colors. Um, the other way I could have done it is um, just use the same block and then get, I could have given it a combo class and changed the color. Um, but this way we can see as we're working on it, we can see the different colors and it'll make it a bit easier uh, to work with when we're building the intera the interaction. Okay, so for the second column, I'll just add a few elements. So I'll add an element, I'll add a heading, and I'll name this um, DPX8L, just a random name there. Um, and yeah, I'll call it D-10 uh, heading. I'll style the type, so I'll say circular bold, um, set up the color to white and we'll set the size of maybe a little bit bigger to 58 and the line height. All right, then I'll add a description. So I'll just add a text block or actually a, a paragraph. So I'll add an element and I'll add a paragraph and then I'll add a, a button here. Um, for column two, I'll give it a display setting of flex, set it to vertical justify center and align center or align to the left there. Um, and then for the, this button, I'll select it and I'll override the alignment and I'll place it on the right. Okay. And for column two, I'm going to add some left padding so that that text isn't so close. So something like this for the paragraph, I'll give it the class name D-10 uh, P for paragraph and give it the font of circular book, make the color white. And then for this button here, I'll rename it to D-10 button. Um, I'll give it a border radius of five, change the background color to magenta, and I'll just say learn more here for the button. Okay, so there we go. I'll add some uh, bottom and top margin to the paragraph to add some spacing between the heading and the button. So I preview and we have the title, the text, and the learn more button. So now let's add the, the interaction. So if I click refresh, we have this interaction here and looks good. So to create it, I'm gonna to go to the interactions. Here for page trigger, I'm gonna click the plus symbol and I'm gonna select page load. And here I'm gonna select when page finishes loading um, this is just a personal preference. I like the idea of having the page load first and then the animation kick in, um, but you can also do when page starts loading. Um, so here when page finishes loading, I'm going to start an animation and I'm gonna add a new timed animation. So I'll click the plus 
and I'll name this um, D-10 page load. Um, so what I want to occur uh, initially is I want the the pink, the, the colored blocks, I want them to start on the left and I don't want the, the image to be visible. So what I'll do is I'll select the first image here or the, or the first block, go to interactions, add a new timed action and for this, I'll say hide show, and I'll say set the display to none, so that image isn't visible. Then I'll select the blue block, and I'll set it to, uh, yeah, and also for this block, we want to set it as the initial state. For, so for the block with the image, um, select next to timing, select the set as initial state. Then I'll select the blue block, and I'll move it to the left, so I'll select move, I'll move it on the X axis so it moves horizontally and I'll say negative 100% so it moves all the way to the left. And one thing we didn't do for the first column, yeah, for the first column we need to set uh, an overflow of hidden so we don't see anything outside of it. So we don't see the blocks moving to the, from the left to the right. Okay, so let me go back into the interaction. And um, yeah, so I'll just right click, duplicate this, right click, change target, um, and I'll select the magenta block. And I also want these to be the initial state. So next to timing, we want them to be the initial state so they start on the left. I'll select, yeah, I'll right click, right click, duplicate, right click, change target, and I'll select the pink block. So initially we don't see anything, and now we want to move the blocks from left to right have the image appear and then have the blocks move out to the right. So what I'll do is I'll select the blue block and yeah, let me set the pink block to an initial state. I'll select the blue block and I'll move it to the right uh, to 0%. So it goes back to it goes back to its initial position and I'll set an easing of ease out expo and a duration of 0.5 is okay. Now I'll select the magenta block. I'll move it 100% or to 0%, so it goes back to its original position. I'll start it with the blue block and I'll give it a delay of 0.2. And I'll give it an easing of ease out expo. So they have kind of like this delayed effect. So we see all the blocks come in, but they come in a little bit one after another. So now I'll select the pink block and I'll say move, move to 0%, set an easing of ease out expo, and a delay of 0.4. So they have a delay of 0.2 between each of the blocks. So now if I preview, let's see, uh, let's see the magenta, 0.2, oh, we need to set, yeah, 0.4, okay. So the first block comes in, then the magenta block, and then the pink block. So I preview, and there we go. So it has kind of that nice reveal effect. And now I want to show the image. So I'll select the block, uh, the first block, and I'll say hide show. And here I'll set it to display block. So the image will appear behind it. And now I want to move all the blocks to the right. So I'll start with the pink block and I'll move it to 100%. And I'll set the easing of ease out expo. I'll add a delay of 0.2, and then I'll select the magenta block. Um, I'll set it to move, and I'll move it to 100% so it moves all the way to the right. I'll add a delay of 0.4, and I'll set an easing of ease out expo, and I'll place it on top of the pink, pink block so they start on top of each other. Yeah, and let me set the delay to 0.4. Then I'll select the pink block. I'll say move, and I'll move it, um, or no, not the pink block. Oh wait, yeah, uh, no, yeah, not the pink block, excuse me. The blue block, and I'll move it uh, here. I'll set it to to move, and I'll move it 100%. Um, and then I'll start it with the other blocks, and I'll add a delay of 0.6. So the reason I added a delay of 0.2 is so that um, the pink block pauses for a little bit, and then all the blocks move to the right. All right, so now if I preview, they come in and then they go out. All right, looks good. 
and maybe we don't need the pause so for the pink block I'll set it to a delay of zero the magenta I'll set it to 0.2 and the pink the blue I'll set it to four so it's just kind of a smoother yeah that looks a bit better so it's just passing through so the blocks come in then they go out and we see the image all right so that's basically it um, it's kind of just working with a few of the techniques we used before with the, you know setting the column to overflow hidden and then having the blocks move in and out of the column so with this we just added uh, a bit of delay so it's kind of it's good practice to work with yeah the delay and moving blocks in and out in and out of other elements and one more thing i'll cover really quickly um, is let's say for tablet and mobile we want the columns to, to stack vertically and not be side by side um, what i can do is i can click on tablet here in webflow and i can select the row so in the navigator i'll select the d-10 row here i'll go to element settings and right down here for the grid options uh, for tablet portrait um, I can select them to be stacked vertically rather than side by side. Um, and then I'll also go and select D-10 row, go into styles, and I'll remove the flex setting. So here rather than um, a display setting of flex, I'll say block. And notice we, we don't see the column. Uh, so what I can do here is uh, select column one, and I will give it some height. So I'll say 300 pixels for height. And there we have um, the column. So if I preview, the effect still still occurs. And I can go to um, mobile landscape and mobile portrait. And now it's stacked on top of each other. Um, and I can also, for the body, I can set it to a color of black. So we can see the text as well. So I'll set it to black. I'll preview. And it looks good. And I probably want to add some um, some bottom and top margin to the row. So I'll just give it some, or maybe padding. All right, let's see how I wanna do this here. Column two. Yeah, we'll add some bottom margin to column two. Okay, just so that there's a little bit of space down there. So now I'll preview. We have uh, tablet, mobile landscape, and mobile portrait. All right, and then we can work more with the uh, the margin or the padding here for the text and things like that. All right, so just wanted to showcase that uh, kind of setting things vertically rather than horizontally on um, different uh, different devices like tablet and mobile. Okay, so that's it for uh, daily interaction number t uh, ten, creating a product showcase with an image reveal. Looks good. Uh, all right, so uh, to view more daily interactions and premium content, visit webdevforyou.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next daily interaction.